The COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately affected women, especially South African women in areas such as mental distress, health care, gender-based violence and employment. An analysis of over 400 studies by the Center for Global Development's COVID-19 Gender and Development Initiative found that during the pandemic, violence against women and children increased by 74%. More women than men lost their jobs in the low-income countries. South African studies show women account for two-thirds of job losses. Women had 80% more mental health challenges, including stress, depression and anxiety. For more on this, we are joined by health expert Julia Criscuolo. Julia, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us welcome to morning live thank you good morning research shows that the COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately affected women just tell us more about this and uh, why particularly women have been affected the most yes I found this a very interesting statistic and they actually looked at 400 studies during the period of March to December 2020. And as you said, um, Simpiwe, is that women, more women lost their jobs than men. In South Africa, it was actually two thirds of women lost their job. And also we find that um, uh, the access to contraception was also affected, antenatal care as well. And because, for example, a lot of the schools were closed, Many of uh, the young teens didn't have access to, um, you know, sex education. So pre uh, uh, teenage pregnancies came about. And somehow um, women seem to be more affected on a mental, emotional level, where there's greater incidence of stress, and anxiety and depression. Um, so this is a, a, an alarming statistic, but something that we can definitely uh, do something about now that we are more aware. Yeah. And how does South Africa rank amongst other countries in the world in terms of our general and mental health? Well, interestingly enough, there was a survey done um, a couple of months ago okay. where they showed, sadly, that South Africa was the second unhealthiest country in the world. Sure. They looked at various factors, one of them being mental health. They looked at obesity. Um, they looked at cardiovascular health. They looked at... Um, uh, government uh, rendering of health care, alcohol use, tobacco use, exercise. So a lot of factors were taken into consideration in coming to the statistic. But sadly, um, South Africa didn't score well. And also the um, rate of obesity among, amongst women is 70% in South Africa. So these are statistics that really help us um, realize that um, health care, well-being, whether it's physical, emotional, really is needing some serious attention, and especially um, in the realm of women's health. Gosh, these are such alarming statistics. I mean, you've just mentioned a uh, high obesity rate. So what does that mean amongst women for their health? Well, we know that when uh, a woman is obese, and you know, when we talk about obesity, we mean a body mass index higher than 25. So um, when, when, when one is carrying a lot of weight, it has serious implications for her health. We know for sure that um, obesity increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. That's heart attacks, strokes, atherosclerosis. It also increases your risk of osteoarthritis, of diabetes, um, and also um, when one is you know, severely overweight, it can really affect one's sense of self-confidence and esteem. So it has implications on all levels. Um, but the good thing is that we can actually do something about it. It's not beyond our realm as women to change. So what tips then do you recommend to women to improve their nutrition, their health and their lifestyle? You know, CPU, in these times, there's so much that we don't have control over. But the one thing that we do is what we put into our mouths, that we have absolute control over. And so yes. if we look at what are we putting in our mouth, what kind of food are we eating? Is it processed food full of empty calories and sugar? Or is it 
food like fruits and vegetables, good quality pro- protein, legumes, fresh water. If we are putting nutrient rich food into our bodies, then our bodies are going to respond in a way that promotes health and well being. Mm. So there's a lot we can do in terms of nutrition. And I really like to keep it simple. I say as close to nature as possible, keep it simple, lots of fresh fruit and vegetables, healthy grains, legumes, good quality protein. And then obviously we need to move our bodies because it's a mathematic formula. You know, what you put in and what you put out needs to be in balance. If you're taking in too many calories and not using them up, you're going to put on weight and vice versa. So we need to move our bodies. We need to get out there and walk, increase our heart rate exercise. And that, by the way, is really good for your mental and emotional health. Because when you exercise and move your body, all the good chemicals get released in your brain. It really helps. Right. And then in terms of lifestyle, I think it's really important during these times to not feel alone, to reach out to other people. You know, we need connection as human beings. So it's important to ask for help. If you're really struggling, if you've lost your job, if you're in a a situation at home where domestic violence is an issue, then don't sit alone. Ask for help. Reach out. Um, If you're feeling really stressed during these times, it's important to, to breathe, to get into nature, to... Uh, find ways where you can uh, soothe your nervous system by doing things that you enjoy um, and finding ways to fuel your energy tank. And of course, you know, supplementation is really, really helpful. We know that um, when the food that we eat doesn't give us the nutrients that we need, then we can look to good supplementation. And I often talk about getting into the sun. So we can take, you know, for example, a deluxe spray, which is vitamin D straight into your body, which benefits your whole system. You know, you can use berberine to help balance your blood sugar levels if you're finding that you're tending towards that way. Um, Liposomal vitamin C, so good for our immune system. So, and also rescue remedy Mm. is a wonderful Mm. remedy if you're really, really stressed or even battling to sleep. So what advice then do you have for women who are going through enormous challenges at the moment and who are struggling to remain positive? I mean, challenges such as uh, those who are struggling with weight gain, uh, perhaps, and uh, with poor health. I think one of the most important things is to change your uh, uh, mind, to have a reframing of your situation, because everything begins in your mind, the way you perceive your situation the story you are telling yourself about your life situation and the beliefs that you have. Like, so for example, if I think, oh, you know, life is against me, this is so hard, why is this happening to me, Um, I'm never going to get out of this, then you can feel straight away that you feel down, your energy goes low and you feel like a victim of your life and that's very Mm. disempowering. Mm. But if I say to myself, okay, this situation is difficult, but I'm not alone. I can ask for help. Life is for me and I have choice. Even though it's really hard, I have choice. And there's something deep within me that I can access that can give me a sense of empowerment and strength. And so straight away, I feel more energized and my outlook is more positive. So if you can begin with that to change your perception, that already is very helpful in terms of moving forward. So, Julia, where can women find out more about healthy living? Well, I would recommend to perhaps visit our, our website, coinhealthcare.com, C-O-Y-N-E, coinhealthcare.com, and they can get some really useful tips yeah. in terms of healthy lifestyle, what to eat, supplementation. That's a good place to start. Okay. Uh, Julia, lovely chatting to you as always. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. All right. The COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately affected women.